Hey there everybody and welcome back. This week's project is a perfect example of how you can make a CNC table shine. In this case we're cutting out uh, street signs for a local neighborhood and we've got 13 streets, a sign on each side, and there's a background to each piece, so that's 52 rectangles we have to cut out. This is 14 gauge hot rolled steel, and you can really see the stresses that are in the steel there as you watch this little piece bend as it's being cut. But I sit there at the table and just start knocking out these uh, lettered signs. These are the ones that actually have the street's name. They're gonna end up being black. I take them over to Tommy and he starts removing the dross from cutting. If you wanna see a video on how we go about removing dross, you can go ahead and click the card right here. Now we used hot rolled in this case because I needed to get four foot by 12 foot sheets so I could get two of these six foot wide signs out of each piece. And unfortunately in my area without a long wait on a special order, it wasn't available in cold rolled in that size. Cold rolled's always a little bit nicer to cut with. It just leaves less dross, it's cleaner, there's less stresses in the metal. It's, it's all around a nicer product, but we made hot rolled work. So as Tommy finishes up removing all the dross and cleaning the pieces up, I'm over here just cutting out the backgrounds. These were pretty simple, just six foot by one foot rectangles, rinse, lather, repeat. This is one of the last jobs I did with uh, my old plasma cutter before I upgraded to the machine that HTP sent out and man, it's hit a nice difference. So much more reliable on keeping an arc lit and I can run the table a little bit faster now. I love it. The good news about these backgrounds is 99% of the dross just came right off of the wire cup, which is how you want your cuts going. When you get into little detail cuts where the machine's got to slow down, you start to have more dross build up. So these street signs are getting mounted to the fences they go on with machine screws into a threaded insert called a nut cert. It's like a rivet with threads on the inside. They're awesome. We've got to do that because the client wants these to be removable if they ever need cleaning or they want to paint the fences they're attached to. And unfortunately, the pickets of the fence that they mount to are not evenly spaced and they're not centered uh, between the columns that are there. So each piece has got to be taken out there, held up in the actual position it's going to go, and we've got to mark where we need to drill our holes for mounting. That's what we're doing here. Just pick them up. Put them on, mark, drill the holes here in the lettered pieces, and we'll take them back to the shop right here and match drill the backgrounds from those lettered pieces. Just line them up, you know, take a 1 8 inch drill bit and then we'll open that up to a quarter inch. We're going to use some fat pan head number 10 screws so that gives us about a 16th of an inch of play in there in case we need to adjust anything. Now in order to keep the backgrounds matched to the lettered pieces they go with, we're going to mark them in a way that will survive powder coating, and that's just a light scratch with a grinder with the first three letters of the street name. Miraculously, while we were drilling all these holes, matching everything up, there's seven holes per sign, we somehow managed to only have one hole that didn't line up correctly in the end and we were able to fix it in the field. So now we've got the signs back from powder coating and we're just matching up uh, backgrounds to foregrounds and making sure that all the ones that say Lakehurst line up with the right street. There's a Lakehurst on each street and then the street name itself. This is where having somebody that you work with uh, that just understands how you work and you guys have a history together comes in great. Tommy and I aren't even really talking, we're just knocking through this. See, we've got to remove the old signs that are, you know, they're wooden with a metal background and some sort of vinyl sticker, and they just look terrible, so those have to go. We just cut the welds, remove them, and then we take our backgrounds, line up our reference point, which in this case is that outside corner by the bottom of the arch. It's three inches down from the top. We drill a hole, open it up to the right size for the nut cert, and then put the nut cert in. It's just like a little squeeze mechanism, just like a rivet. Take that one out. And we'll add in a screw into that one corner, then put a level on it and add a second hole, mark that, put another nut cert in. And then once that's done, we can mark all five of the remaining holes on the sign. And we got into a rhythm by about the sixth or seventh one of these where 
you know, we didn't even have to talk. We were just knocking them out. I think we got these down to about six minutes a piece on install, which was great. Because as you can see by my unique color of pink, uh, it was kind of sunny out there. This is Tommy with the Nutsert tool. You just thread on that little rivet and you insert it and squeeze back the uh, threaded piece out. I don't know, a shank, I don't know what to call that. And you can see they are just ingenious little inventions. I know I'm talking a lot about them, but man, have they made my life easy once I found out about those. I've been using it all the time. I think I bought about $200 worth of the rivet pieces just so I'd have everything. And there we go, we line them all up, sink in the uh, seven screws for each sign and move on to the next one. We're gonna jump ahead right here to the finished product. See, they really stand out off the backgrounds they're on. Uh, much better than the old wooden ones that were falling apart. And we have the street sign or street name on one side of the street and the neighborhood name on the other. This was a good project. Uh, I really encourage you guys to get out there and if you're thinking about getting a CNC, do it. This project would have paid for that table all by itself. Somebody at Amazon got drunk when they were setting my packages. <laughs> I needed these little black decorative screws, so I ordered 20 of these 10 packs. They came in 18 individual envelopes. What the heck? They're all from the same fulfillment center too, it's not even different centers.